So as you can see, we have a lot of them here. See them here. We have a lot of them. We have a lot of them. Jumbo size. See them. Whoa. Whoa. So if you enter this farm, you will not know we have things like this. Yeah. You understand? Look you will not know. In fact, in fact, you will think there is nothing here. I know what this farm is worth. The worth of this farm. That was last week. We met the snail that challenged the record of the heaviest snail in the world. And it's found by one farmer edit, a farmer whom we interviewed, put his video on YouTube on our channel, and boom, the story changed. And a lot of people started patronizing him. He has a WhatsApp training group, a Telegram training group for, for people. And it's interesting to note that he farms for commercial purposes, like to make money and put food on the tables of Nigeria, and not for prize winning and all that. So you can imagine what farmers like this can do with grants. So if you're a relevant body that can offer grants to these farmers, get in touch with us and we link you up. Because the heaviest snail in the world weighs 900 grams and it was 24 years old. Farmer's snail is only 3 years old and weighs 700 grams. That's 200 grams of the record. And he's not farming for price winning. So you can see how close he is and if he's giving that special push, you will take him for. And we have that kind of talent in Nigeria. So if you have that kind of talent, reach out to Top 10 Nigeria and we'll find a way to get to you and do some of the things that we do, the magic, sprinkle the magic and post this on YouTube and give you the exposure that you actually require. The kind of thing we do at Top 10 Nigeria, we're either making you money or we're saving you money. This week, he shows us the rest of the farm. He discusses state of origin, where he can find the species of snails that he has in his farm. And also, he shares the feeding habits, the nursery, what they do, diseases and pests, and how he manages his the type of pen system. That's the, the building he has, why it's constructed the way it's constructed and several views on how the elements, the environmental elements affect the snail. So you need to watch this. And also the shading of the snails with you know treated plantain leaves so that to provide shading for them during the day. It's an interesting video. And we incidentally on the day that we are shooting this documentary, a customer who watched the video we posted or formatted on YouTube flew into Abuja in order to get 50 pieces of point of lay snails for his own farm. We got to discuss with him. We talked to him about the inspiration behind him farming snails and also what he considers as the benefit of farming snails. It's interesting the benefits he gave us. You need to hear this man talk. So it's a new perspective. And also he also discussed with us the ease of snail farming. And that's what I have for you today. Let's ride on. My name is Pascal Ogwara. This is Top 10 Nigeria, and you are on the front row seat. So we now have what we have here is a marginata. As you can see, this this, this species is, is different from this. Yeah. This cannot grow to this level, to this yeah. size. Mm. And you can see it has pinky mm. tail and pink around here. Okay. This is marginata. Okay. And this nest is found around Edo, rivers, aquarium, like that. It's a swamp forest snail. Okay. Okay. Now, this one originated from, this is Ashantina, Ashantina, Ashantina from uh, Togo, Ghana, and enter Nigeria through Lagos, mm -hmm. Oshun, and Ondo. This one we call Ondo snail. Mm -hmm. okay. Now, we now have one other species there, which is a folica. Folica, let me show you. Let's go. Sheer quantity of snails okay. that are here. Now this is where we have the folica. You now see folica here. Now this is what I was trying to tell you. So this is a folica. You see? Now this folica is the biggest in this family, this particular species. Yeah. We have the smaller ones. Now this particular one will lay up to 200 eggs. Yeah. 200 eggs. And this can only be found within North Central. Okay. You can see it in Abuja, mm. Kaduna, um, Nasarawa State, mm. and uh, Kogi State. Mm. And in Kogi State, there is another species of snails, but that one is marginata, mm. but not that particular type. Okay. They have different types like that. Mm. So, well, basically in Nigeria here, what we really we recognize is the three species, mm. which is Ashantina, 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 Marginata, and the Fulika that I'm talking about here. Yes. So in this farm, 
the one we have, we have different compartments for them. This one is for Fulika and every other thing that you have seen here. They are for Magina, um, Ashantina, Ashantina. Mm -hmm. It's only that one, that particular thing that is only for um, okay, um, uh, Maginata. So what you have seen here, they are the same special. You understand? Wow. This is a, a point of lay. Mm -hmm. uh, this thing is a point in of this uh, particular pen, how many do you estimate that is inside? We have like about, almost about close to 300 pieces here. We have close to 300 pieces here. Let's see them here. I also have um that white one is a uh, albino. No. Oh. Albino snail. Mm. Yes. Wow. Albino. We now we have a, a immac immaculate and it's still there. I will open it for you to see. We have immaculate. Please I'll remove that as well. Let me show you immaculate snail. Why you have seen them on hanging on the wall is because the 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 the, the pain is not habitable for them. When the pain is habitable, you will never see them on the on the wall. When I put that dry leaf now, mm -hmm. and the dry leaf covers the whole of this, you will never see them on the wall. On the wall. Mm -hmm. All of them would hide under the, 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 the dry leaf. Mm -hmm. Why you see them is because there is no enough dry leaf. That is why you see them on on the on the wall. Mm -hmm. And it's not too good for them. The reason is the, the winds dry them so quickly and they don't like winds. Mm. So we're trying to protect them from the direction of the winds. That is why you see us we put this so that what we can only have is the, the oxygen entering from oh. the top. <clears throat> but by the side we have covered this so there is no excess uh, this mm. thing coming in. Mm. So so that is what we do. Because what you will notice if they are if there is enough uh, uh, this thing you will see them, they will start drying up to what you have seen here. You see mm. the color? They will start drying up to this level. Mm -hmm. So so we're trying to put dry leaf as much as we, we could. You understand? Mm -hmm. So that they are eating from it. It was the dry leaf was all over this place. Whoa. They are eating from yes. They are eating from it. If I don't bring food, that is what they eat. You understand? The pain. Wow. So this, so this is what we have as you can see. As you can see. What we have here is more than two. 200 pieces. 200 pieces. We have the different sizes. Yeah. See all of them. This part of the immaculata I was talking about. Okay. It has a white, purely white, but the main one is there. Okay. Uh, so You have seen the baby that have hatched from the pain. So we sort them like this all over. When you come and what we, what we call transfer. Mm. We transfer them to the nursery. This let's the let's nursery. see the baby. This is the baby. Okay. We transfer them from the parents' pain to the nursery. This is the nursery. We have the nursery here. We have a lot of them here. Just like I showed you from the other, the other side. A lot of them are here. A lot of them are here. The already grown one are also there, but we'll still sort those ones out because they are up to the stage of sorting. And as you going to have a space problem. <laughs> yes, yes. No, we, we don't have a space problem because most times we sell, we sell them from here yeah. and we bring it from the other pen from here. Okay. Yeah. So we don't really have a space problem because we have enough space there. You have even seen the expansion mm -hmm. that we are trying to do over there. Yes. So, now I want to ask a question here. The poultry uh, business, they always have this infection, that infection. It, the snail business doesn't have that kind of uh, problem. No, 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 no. Snails also have um, infection. Oh. Yes, it has a bacterial infection and fungi. Infection. So how do you mitigate that? So what we do is um, we try as much as possible, but they don't die like that. Okay. They don't die in numbers. Okay. You can only see and pick one or two. 
you understand? They don't die like as if they are having like um, the poultry, like a poultry that they have infection all over that will transfer mm -hmm. from one person to they also transfer, but you have keep your pains uh, clean yeah. and you do the necessary things. Okay. You understand? You avoid that. Oh, okay. You understand? So with what we have here, by the time they eat this, by tomorrow you will not see this again. I put this feed for them yesterday, mm -hmm. and by tomorrow you will not see it again. So we try as much as possible to clean up. Mm -hmm. You understand? If at most times they are the one that clean up the whole thing, <laughs> because by the time you come tomorrow, you will not see this feed here again. So they also affect the contaminated feed. Also affect them. Okay. Uh, contaminated feed also affect them. So you have to try as much as possible to keep the pain and the surrounding clean. Okay. And you know people complain about uh, invaded uh, snail. I mean, uh, and, uh, soldier Reptile. ants. Soldier ants to invade this, the, the the farm. Oh. Maybe through the surrounding. Okay. I always I advise people. I say, you don't need to put gutter all around your farm. But what you need to do is for you to monitor what is inside because the the this the, the ants may not be coming from outside but they may invert through the ground the ground you understand so that is what you need to look out for as i'm in this farm you don't know my eyes have entered everywhere around this place and if i see anything like an ant that can affect this i will quickly do it the next you understand oh. so so that is the way we go about it if i see any ants here yeah, i have chemical that will just do what we call evacuation i will evacuate and treat the pain before and now introduce them back to the pain. Beautiful. Beautiful. So as you have seen here, what you have seen here is what we call um, a semi-intensive um, snow unit or system, or a, a, a intensive care system. You see, we have, we, we are using iron. The wall is uh, quarantined, we're using block. You understand? And we now use a uh, net, this wire goes, you understand, on the top. Why we leave here, the middle, is so that the rain and the sunlight can enter because of what we are planted here. This serves as their feet too. We cut this time to time because the little babies eat the fresh leaf. As you can see, this is what they have ate from. You see, they are the little baby that are, they are the one that ate all this. You understand? So the, ba the little baby, it's basically they eat fresh leaf. You understand? So that is why we planted this. And um, we now use tapolin. You can use tapolin. You can use the zinc. You can use something too. To take to prevent water or the rest of to enter. The okay, place. from entering the yeah, pan. Okay. So that is why we have used that tapulin. But the tapulin did not cover very well because it was supposed to come up to this point. That is why you are still seeing water entering inside. But because of the system that we are running, as you can see, the water when we'll the water it. enters, it goes down because the the ground the floor has not been plastered. Okay. So. So, that is so that's one of the advantages of having uh, a pen that doesn't yes, have this, plaster this, this particular pen, this particular system is called earth system, earth pen system, just like you are having an uh, earthen pen for, for fish, uh, 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 this thing. so fish, uh, uh, pond. pond. So we are having, what we have here is earthen pen system in, in, in a, a semi-intensive closer uh, uh, unit. Wow. <laughs> 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 we have a uh, here we normally do what we have here. As you can see is where we, we do the egg the okay. egg uh, uh, incubation. incubation. We we when we get we, we take the egg, the one we found on the surface, mm. we bring them and put them and put them here mm. for in incubation. Mm. So by the time they are incubated you will come out. They are hatched, they will come out. Mm. So let me do your own uh, selection. You mm. came, he came for for purchase. So he came to get about the 50 pieces of this. No? So okay. that is what I'm going to do now. Yeah. All right, so um, uh, can I talk with you a bit? Yeah, of course, of course. All right, um, uh, welcome to Top 10 Nigeria. What's your name, sir? My name is Pastor Isiri Oruma. All right, my well, pleasure meeting you. Um, you seem to love this. You are getting 50 at yes, once. Yes. So what's your goal? How did you develop this love for snail? Well, um, it actually started by, what I say, by instinct. I just saw some snails around my compound. And I used to have an uncle who was a professor. And I knew, I remembered when I was young, he used to bring snails. So I said, okay, let me just give it a try and see how this, you know, at least get busy when I'm not at work. So I did it and I could see them, they were producing very well and they were growing and I said, this is lovely. And I, know, I, do, I do know that um, snail meat is something that is highly marketable. Yes, yes. It's and very interesting. It's easy sir. to run and easy to maintain. So I said, okay, let me give it a try. And um, I didn't have this kind of big size. So I said, okay, um, I think the big size will also be very marketable. Mm -hmm. So I said, let me give it a try. That's why I said, okay, let me come and pick some. 
All right, so you are getting this for uh, production. Yes, for production. Okay, yes. that's 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 beautiful. Now, what will you say is the best part of rearing snail? You know, funny enough, eh, it's not just only the um, the profit you get. Mm. The you know, some people use them as pet, but you know, of course, I'm not using. Them, but one thing I'm, I I like about these snails is that they are very. They just give you a sense of joy. We're looking at them moving, <laughs> <laughs> looking at them producing. You know, it just gives you a sense of fulfillment. Yeah. You know? So that also is important. You mm -hmm. know? And you know, you know, it helps to. And sometimes when you you want to relax, people have different methods of recreation. Okay. Sometimes you just want to watch them and just see them. And at the same time, you know, people talk about doing something that gives you joy. Yeah. So you know, seeing them and also <laughs> you know breeding them gives me two two in one results you know <laughs> that's beautiful yeah. is this your main work no 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 no. it's not my main work I mean, okay so you can actually afford to run this and at the same time yeah. focus on other occupation yes. that you have that's the fascinating thing about snails because they don't demand too much of your time too much of your energy and then they don't also demand too much um investment too much money you don't even put too much of it inside so you can just do it do it in the very you can do it in the very um a gentle way, past time way, but it will produce a lot for you. Yeah. Thank you very much. Uh, it's our pleasure talking with you. you. And we wish that other Nigerians will you know, look at this and be more productive with their time and yes. resources. Thank you very much. Thank you. Sir. Before we brought it here, okay. Yeah. So, this is how you cover it up, yes. You cover it up like this. You cover it up like this, you will never see any of them on the wall. On the wall, it will be hiding. So, that's it for this episode. In the next episode, Formentet discusses the different kind of pens you can have, the building of the snail farm that you can have, from the elaborate to the economical ones where you do not have the space at all and you don't want to put a structure that is tight on ground, you want a movable structure. He discusses all of that and we're going to bring that to you in our next episode, that and lots more. So that's it for this episode, my name remains Pascal Okwara, this is Totten Nigeria and we're out. I've already climbed out. Look at what I've just put up. Yeah, yeah, very fast. But the impression is that <laughs> snails, uh, they are so they, slow. They move, they, see, they move at the slow pace, but they just keep moving. That is it. Uh, they just do. <laughs> they just go. If they want to just go, that's how they move. So that small pace can cover a lot of distance in a short time. <laughs>